Hey, what's up everybody? This is your boy Kenny and welcome back to KRS TV and this is my review of the haves and the have-nots season 6 episodes um, 11 through 14. I'm sorry I haven't been doing reviews lately but um, I've been dealing with a lot of personal issues and those who've been following me on social media y'all know what's going on with me and I want to take this time to actually thank everyone who um, has sent love and support to me and my family. I greatly appreciate it. Um, but yeah, the having to have nice has been off the hook. I mean, just from the, you know, from the mid-season premiere till now, yeah, a lot has happened. And I'm not, I'm going to try my best not to, you know, make this a long review, but I'm going to just pick and choose on certain things I'm going to talk about. One, that damn Veronica. Veronica, where the episode picked up in episode 11, where it left off, you know, you know, she's in front of the house that David bought. You know, and it's in the community that she wanted to live in. So she sees that the house. She looks to her left and sees there's a brick on the ground. She picks up the brick, throws it through the damn glass window. Um, David comes out. Mm, David comes out. You know, in his little box of shorts and everything. And they go back and forth. And she's going off saying, this is my house. I remember when I brought you here. I remember when I said this is the house I wanted and you said it was too expensive and now you're living here with that whore. So she's going back and forth saying that this is my house. This is my house. And I'm like, Veronica, yeah, he bought that house originally for you, but if you weren't such a nasty bitch, you would have had this house already. But no, after you burnt down the house, almost with um, David in it, because if David didn't get up, David would have died. And... When it came, and afterwards, he had bought the house after that fire, you know, for you and Jeffrey to move in with him. But you bought another house, didn't tell him where the hell you was at, and you just been doing your own thing, being in your own world. So, bitch, you fucked up your situation yourself. And that's the crazy thing about Veronica is that she sabotages her own shit, but she is so narcissistic and so full of herself, she never wants to admit her shit. And she's just going off, they're going back and forth, and he's like, you know, you do our son in jail, and, you know, I know all your dirt, Veronica, and I don't have no, and like, and she was like, oh, you know my dirt? Well, uh, I know your dirt too, so let's put everything on the line, motherfucker, if that's how you want to go. I'll put all your shit out there. So they're going back and forth, and, you know, um, Damn, Erica is like, I'm going to call the police and all that. And, you know, it, it just got to like a crazy mess to the point where David literally told her, I never want to see you again as long as I live. And he was like, and she was like, oh, but you're going to see me because you're in my house. And um, trust me, I will get even, David. I will get even. You keep disrespecting me and making me look bad out here in these streets. Oh, yes, I'm going to get you, David. And I'm going to get you real good. So I'm like, this bitch is just continuing to place threats. But definitely, David is one person that's in her radar. Even though he got a restraining order on her ass, she's still popping up doing bullshit. Then, afterwards, Erica freaking out. Like, I can't take this anymore. This is just too much drama. I can't deal with this. And then, David was like, didn't you just get out of an abusive relationship, though? Oh yeah, I I I I know. It's just it's just becoming too much, and I I I'm sorry, and I I'm overreacting, and and like David is really, I think David is is really um, he I think he's definitely peeping game with Erica. I think he likes Erica because one Erica gives him good company, and probably Erica probably got some good stuff, but um, he's not fully believing her story. Nor is he fully, um, he's not fully, you know, believing, you know, everything that she's saying. So, he's not fully, he's not fully on to what Erica's trying to sell, but he likes her, so he's keeping her around, but I think he's still filling her out. So, 
I, I really do think that, yeah, David's kind of got that eye up. Like, I don't know what's going on with this bitch, but I'm going to get to the bottom of it. Because David's just that kind of person. Then we see Hannah goes out on her date with, with Derek. She had a little situation where... Now, first of all, I like the outfit and I love the makeup, but that wig was horrible. That was circa 1978 Millie Jackson wig. That shit did not work for fucking Hannah. It didn't work for Hannah at all. And... The crazy thing about it is that damn Benny was even like, where the hell are you going with that ugly Halloween wig on? <laughs> I'm like, but Benny's an asshole because Benny called himself trying to size up Derek. And Hannah checked his ass. She was like, um, didn't you say earlier you was grown and, you know, you can make your own decisions and all that? Okay, well, that applies to me too. You grown, right? Yeah, you grown, right? Yeah. Okay, well, take your grown ass on and I'm going to go on my date. And they go on a date and they rekindle and then they plan on going out dancing afterwards. Then we see that Veronica decides to mosey her ass down to the precinct to fuck with Jeffrey. You know, to let him know that, you know, see, when you don't listen to me, this is what happens. You know, just, I'm just going to rub salt in your wounds. You're already in jail, so I'm going to come there and just make it worse. And he asked, like, when am I getting out? She was like, oh, I don't know. You know, I can't get you out of here. This is a federal crime now. You you are now in the system and you're gonna have to go to trial. And from that point on, it's it's a it's it's whatever it's whatever after that. But she said, But if I can figure something out, I'll get back to you. I'm like, Oh bitch, you are horrible. But then she goes out there and decides to mess with damn Justin. Now Justin, aka Glenn Close. She ain't for Veronica's bullshit. Because she called herself being cute. Talking about some, hey girl. And he turned around and came back. Because, hey, he is a big old girl. Shoot. <laughs> I think um, Jeffrey, I think Jeffrey, um, I think Jeffrey is one person that can actually vouch for that. That, yeah, he is a big old girl when they behind closed doors. Like, yes! <laughs> but... They go back and forth, and they taking, she's taking jabs like, I know I get under your skin. I can tell I get under your skin. And he was like, yeah, just like I get under your son's skin. Oh, yeah. And we're lovers, too. And after he gets out, we're moving in together. I hope you're getting us a housewarming gift. And she's like, well, I don't think I'll be doing a housewarming gift because he's never going to get out of jail. And he was like, oh, we'll see about that. And then he was like, then he started asking, like, so... So, um, so how do you feeling after that bad accident? So immediately she starts putting shit together. Oh, bitch, you must have had something to do with it. And he's like, oh, no, I have, I have no idea. I'm an officer of the law. I have no, I have, I have no knowledge of that. But she was like, but there was somebody that was trying to rub me off the road. So I probably wouldn't be, so. I'm probably, it probably was you. I, 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 and so she's kind of putting it together that yeah it was Justin that was coming after her ass but then all of a sudden he also starts to bring up her marriage life so how's married life I kind of heard that um, he got rid of his old ball and chain for a beautiful younger woman so he was really going in on Veronica and Veronica felt some kind of way about it I'm like you keep on fucking with her ass like you know, Justin ain't ain't playing when it come to that damn Jeffrey. She wants Jeffrey, and she will fucking take anybody out. You see what the fuck he was doing to Wyatt's ass? Like, bitch, ain't he ran your ass off the road, too? Oh, trust me, ain't nobody gonna stand between him and his black meat. It ain't gonna happen, honey. So, we saw all that go on. Then we see Candace drugs Oscar, and while Oscar passes out, she uses his laptop to um, wire the money that he got from Wyatt to her account, which has the crier name. So I'm like, see, that damn Candace just ain't getting it. Like, boo-boo. You could have been on with Charles getting this long money, but you'd rather try to get this short money and just create all this damn drama right there within your city. Because you think you're going to take that damn money and these motherfuckers ain't going to come for you? It's just like Candace right now is just, she's still, you know, in this, in this like really bad state of mind ever since um, the death of Quincy. And she's just very flight forward and she don't give a fuck who she hurts. 
I mean, because she treat old old girl Gia like shit, and she robbing her like crazy. You know, got her turning tricks when she only giving her fifty dollars a fifty dollars a John, which is some bullshit. But you know, but yeah, that so pretty much we see that going on, and we see that she got um, Rocky, the guy working at the bar. He's the one that actually, you know, took the picture of um, of uh, of of his. Uh, she he's the one that took a picture of um, Oscar's screen. So she she pretty much got a whole little operation going on, and she just she's really giving straight up. She's really acting like a straight up pimp. All right, so we got that going down. Then we got that damn Melissa. Melissa. Then got her got her hands on Veronica's phone and text Benny to come over. Benny comes over to see there's no Veronica there and only Melissa's there. And Melissa, and it really doesn't take her that much to throw herself on to Benny. And the next thing you know, her and Benny are on the couch and she's riding Benny, you know, for her life. I mean, she is like literally saddle up, saddle up, saddle up. And she is literally riding, riding the mess out of out of Benny and we know Benny 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 got got a quick dick and he's quick to put it in something you know and it's crazy and it's like Benny nasty too because Benny done had sex with Veronica and now he over there messing around with Melissa and ain't even washed his ass just as nasty as he want to be and while he's getting it in you know while they getting it in Veronica shows up so that's number three she had a situation with David had a situation at the at the jailhouse with um, Jeffrey and Justin, and now she come home and got to deal with Melissa and Benny. And Melissa is just laughing and thinking this shit is funny. She's like, "Oh, you think this shit is funny?" She's like, "Yeah, it's funny." Like, "Come on, girl, he don't want your old ass." And she's like, and then Veronica's like, "Well, obviously he wants your dumb ass because you are dumb and you're stupid, you know, because I took advantage of you." And your mother took advantage of you. So what does that make you? Stupid. And that damn Melissa decided to flip the fuck out and grab Veronica by that ponytail. And they start tussling back and forth and shit. And this shit's crazy. Because Benny's all in the middle of it trying to break it up. And he's like, look, I, I, I don't want you, like, you guys need to calm down, okay? I, I don't have any part to this. And then, like, Melissa's like, dude, you in this, bruh? And like, and Veronica's like, that I can agree on. You're in the middle of it. So she pretty much says that, bitch, you getting the hell up out of here. And she's like, I don't have nowhere to go. She's like, I don't give a damn. You getting the hell out of my house and the hell with you and everything about you. And she's like, oh, no, I am carrying your grandchild. You will care for me and this baby. I ain't going no damn where. And then Benny up there literally trying to protect Melissa and shit. I'm like, Benny, you are a piece of shit. You come up in this woman's house and disrespect her house by fucking that bitch on her couch. And then you're going to be protecting her on top of it? So as soon as she told Benny, like, you know what? I'm over your ass. I don't ever want to see you again. Don't call me. Don't come by my house. Just get the hell out of here. And he's like, okay, fine. You know, it is what it is. You know, shoot, I don't belong to you no way. You know, just being real smug with it. And I'm like, dude, you're not even considering the fact that you... You disrespected her home. It's one that you fucking Melissa, but you doing it in her house. So all of a sudden when he goes to get out the way, that damn Veronica grabs damn Melissa's ass, you know, and literally tosses her the fuck out the house and then pushes Benny out and tells him, tells them that, you know, get away from my house. You And, and she said, don't you ever come back here. And she says, oh, Benny... I ain't forgetting this shit. Oh, trust me. I'm going to get you. I'm going to get you real good. I'm going to get your ass. So we saw that go on. And I'm like, damn. That was crazy as shit. But then again, Benny's messy. So whatever she got in store for Benny, it is what it is. Benny earned it because Benny been doing. Benny, Benny is attractive. But Benny is very simple. He's very dumb. And he's completely full of himself. Like, bruh. You like, the, the shit that you bringing on to yourself, you bringing on because of your own arrogance 
and your own stupidity. So, it is what it is. Asshole. Okay, so... So then, after that, we get a situation with Catherine and Jim. They're still waiting at Wyatt's place, waiting for him to get there. All of a sudden, Wyatt gets in there, and he's going off like, Oh, what the hell you guys are doing here? Get the hell out of my house. He's like, what? So what, you guys are going to kill me? And he's and Jim is like, we're not going to kill you, Jim. We're, your, we're not going to kill you, Wyatt. We're your parents, and we love you. And he's like, yeah, whatever. Just get the hell out. So he goes to hug him, and he feels something in his jacket. He pulls the shit out and see that it's fucking cocaine. Oh, Jim flipped the fuck out. All of a sudden, he's like, oh, this bullshit. You're doing this shit again. Oh, I'm clean. I'm not going to do this again anymore. Really? And this is what the fuck you do? Oh, you know what? I'm getting rid of this shit. So Jim goes to the sink to pour out all of that damn Colombian cocaine. He flips the fuck out and he gets like, and he goes into this junkie rage. Catherine tries to break it up. He literally takes his fist and he backhands the shit out of Catherine. And Catherine literally slid across the floor like she was playing baseball. Like, safe. <laughs> like, straight up. And then, all of a sudden, he takes a bottle, cracks, um, cracks Jim over the head. And then he gets, like, this little statue and was, like, literally holding it over them like, ah! But he didn't fucking use it. So all of a sudden, after all of that went down, that damn Jim gets up and starts talking cash shit to Wyatt. He's like, you really wanted to kill me, huh? Like, I saw it in your eyes. You wanted to kill me. Well, let me tell you something, son. Don't you ever almost kill anybody. Either you kill them or shut the fuck up. And I was like, okay, Jim. It's like, what the hell was that? Ooh. I was like, like Jimmy better leave his ass alone before he kill you for real. Stop fucking with him. And then he's telling him to apologize to his mother and she and like he's just get the hell out. Get out of here. Get out of here. And I'm like, see, y'all <laughs> that's what happens when y'all fuck with them junkies, man. Them damn junkies be having a little moments and they just flip the hell out. And that's exactly what the hell happened. <laughs> Which was crazy as shit. So, yes. So, yeah, we saw that go on with them. You know, so now this fool done lost his Colombian. You know, after he paid all that money. Not even also realizing that his account's been hacked. So he ain't gonna have no more money up in there. But here he go, strolling down to, you know, what was called like the Iron Grill or something like that. You know, where... Um, where Mitch's uncle works at, works out of pretty much, and he goes back down there trying to get some more, trying to get some more um drugs, and immediately he's kind of caught him alarm like, dude, I just gave you a lot of shit, I shouldn't be seeing you. No, I just saw you just a minute ago. What the hell you do with all that shit? Like, are you the feds? What the hell is going on? So immediately he got suspicions like shit, and then. He ain't got no money on him right now. So he says, that, dude, when you give me some money, I'll give you some more drugs. How about that? But he's like, come on. Um, you know, I can't get no money right now because my account's closed. But in the morning, I'll be able to get something after at the midnight. So the, um, the guy that was working the bar was like, go ahead and give it to him, man. I see his keys. He a rich kid. He got you. Just go ahead and give him. But he let him know, if you ain't got my money, I'm going to fuck you up. So... I'm going to get back to that one. Yes. So, we saw that go down. Then um at the um at the j at you know back at the jail, we see there's a new inmate. Um I don't I don't know the guy's name. If y'all know his name, put it down in the comments, but I know the actor. He actually was on Bold and the Beautiful and he's fine as hell. But um, he's in there in the jail talking to Jeffrey, and he kind of let it be known that um, there was a certain officer that kind of got a little friendly with him in the squad car and did some sexual things to him. And immediately, that damn Jeffrey knows exactly who it is because it sounds like, you know, Justin's um, M.O. 
So then we see that damn Justin comes over, you know, comes and says that, you know, um, get over here or whatever. And, and like Jeffrey's like, I'm not going anywhere with you. He says, I'm not here for you. I'm here for him. Let's go. He's like, I'm not going anywhere with you. He says, I said, let's go. So all of a sudden he goes away with old boy. And then we see that Jeffrey's ass is jealous as hell. And he goes off with old boy. Probably old boy polished. He probably polished old boy's knob and let him go. You know, because that damn, that damn Justin is a, is a messy bitch. So then later on, he comes and gets Jeffrey and tells him that he's, that he's going home. But really, he's not. But then he starts taunting fucking Jeffrey and saying that you're jealous. I can see it in your eyes. You're jealous. Uh Uh-huh. Yeah. And you know I have a big sexual appetite. You know how big it is. I'm like, yeah, he probably does know how big it is as many times y'all been fucking in that damn um, conference hall. You know, with no no, um, cameras. Because some odd reason the cameras are always off when you two are in there so so yeah he letting he letting it be known like huh you ain't the only piece of ass out here so if you ain't gonna get it to me i'm gonna get it somewhere else and he's like you're jealous yeah you're jealous and i'm like justin you really want somebody to beat the shit out of you because you are really doing too much like and he's really taking advantage of the fact that he's in control that he can just maneuver and manipulate Jeffrey to do him what he wants him to do. And it is a form of abuse. It's psychological. And he's just having fun playing these games and shit. And I'm like, okay, this, 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 like, Jeffrey, you need to wake up and, and kind of get a grip that this dude is crazy and you need to get the hell away from him. So we see all that go on and then he pretty much says that oh the only way and he says that you know so I'm, I'm not I'm not free to go he said hell no you're not free to go but you can go into this conference room because that's the only place you're going he's like I'm not going in there with you he's like on second thought yeah I might want to take you back to yourself because it's going to take me a while for me to get back up anyway I was like oh so you really showing off now Oh yes, and another thing that happened is that you know Derek and um, Derek and Hannah go out dancing. They go to see Stephanie Mills, and Stephanie Mills looked gorgeous, and she sang beautifully. You know, sung my jam too. I feel good, baby. I feel good all over. I was like, yes, she was doing a damn thing, and they was getting that life, and then all of a sudden. I have to admit, Derek was kind of rubbing me the wrong way because he was being real forceful, you know, like, you know, so, we'll, so, um, so, yeah, um, I want to go to church with you tomorrow. So, um, should I call you or should I nudge you? I'm like, come on, bruh. Like, Hannah ain't gave no indication that she's going to let you get, that she's going to let you get the cat tonight. I mean, no, no, boo-boo. The cat is, the cat is, the cat is napping. And no, you are not invited, boo. You ain't, you are not invited. So he eventually takes her home. He gives her a kiss, and he's all trying to push himself onto her, saying that like, let me stay the night and all this shit. And then all of a sudden, Benny says, "Oh, you ain't staying the night up in here." And then he's like, you know, good night, Derek. We'll talk. We'll talk tomorrow. So he leaves, and then we see that he got Melissa's ass with him. So immediately, you know, this definitely, you know, questions, you know, um. This definitely, you know, rings bells with Hannah because she's like, okay, where's this girl come from and what's going on? And we see that Melissa is very emotional. So her and and, um, Hannah have a conversation and she's asking about her, you know, you know, you know, where is she from and all that. And she does let her know that she that she lives with Veronica Harrington and that she's she's pregnant with Jeffrey's baby. So immediately. She gives this look to Benny like, you disgusting motherfucker. Like, you literally, you are a mess. And then when she goes, you know, about to, um, she's like, you know what? I'm going to let you guys handle this. I'm going to bed. We'll talk in the morning, sweetheart. And then all of a sudden, Benny, like, follows her like, she can't stay here. She can't stay here. It's like, what? You brought her here. So she your friend. So, yeah, deal with it. And she says, and she's like, you really think I'm stupid, don't you? You having sex with both of them, so I'm kind of figuring how you met this girl. You met her at um at um 
you actually met her um, at you know you know at Veronica's house and all of a sudden now she's here oh yeah you messy and she said you need to go somewhere with your nasty ass and take a shower I'm like you better tell him Hannah Benny old trifling ass So then we see that um, Mitch's uncle goes in the bathroom they, they, to get Wyatt ass up. Wyatt him passed out. He done shot him up some heroin or a speedball or whatever. He gets the fuck up. You know, he's saying like, look, it's time. Get me my fucking money. So all of a sudden he tries to um, run the car through the um, damn ATM and he realizes he has no money in the account and he keeps running it and then all of a sudden Mitch's uncle pulls out a gun and it's like you're playing games bruh you're playing games I was like oh shit shit's crazy then we find out that the guy that was in jail with Jeffrey the one that um that Justin was messing around with he actually works at the Artesian and he's pretty much shadowing um, Rocky. Rocky cusses his ass out for him being late because what happens is that he got a DUI and he got arrested but yet got a little bit of something extra down the line. So so obviously so, so pretty much you know he's now on on duty and you know um, Candace up in the room then gave then gave you know Oscar you know that um you know that little tonic that put him to sleep but now she can't get him up and he foaming at the mouth and shit. So, um, so she's like panicking because she don't know what to do. And she knows Rocky's not there. So she calls the um, front desk. She calls the, um, the bar and old boy answers. And he's like, and he's like a real smart ass too. She's like, um, yo, um, are you the new guy? She's like, yeah, I'm the new guy. He's like, look, I got a situation up here. You think you know what you're doing? She's like, yeah, I know what I'm doing. I'll be up there in a second. So he goes up there and, you know, he pretty much, you know, you know, puts, um, you know, something in his mouth to make him throw up. And she's like, I could have did that. And he was like, well, why didn't you? <laughs> like, because Candace is doing too damn much. She just don't know when to cut it off. She's like, dude, you don't want to play with me. I'm not the one to fuck with. He's like, look, I know about you. I got you. So he gives him an adrenaline shot, and Oscar wakes up. And afterwards, she puts his ass out, throws his laptop and his clothes out. He comes to find out that his laptop's broken, and he's like, yo, I don't know what the hell you did, Candace, but if you did something crazy, I swear I'll kill you. So he calls the front desk, talks to the manager, you know, the manager that's trying to, you know, who, or the manager who's trying to get close to Catherine. And he's asking, you know, do they have any laptops? And he said that I can take you to the shop in the morning, but everything's closed. It's like two or three in the morning. So he says, okay, fine. Arrange a ride for me to arrange, arrange a ride for me to go to the computer store first thing in the morning. So that's what ends up happening. He gets a new laptop and goes in and see that the money's that, that the money that the money's there. You know that nothing's been moved. So he's like, thank God. But um. But yeah, he also calls Jim and lets Jim know that he got everything together and that everything is good. So after that, we see that um, that um, Candace had reached out to G and told G to call Jim, get Jim down here, and um, you know, you know, drug him and spend a night with him or whatever. So that's what ends up happening. She made about fifteen hundred, and. You know, she calls um, Gia into the room that, um, you know, you know, to fill, for her to fill her end on, on um, Jim, like, you know, because she asks, you know, for, you know, a special drink, which means, you know, you know, for him to get drugged. So his ass was drugged and he slept all night. And then all of a sudden, you know, she's talked. So therefore Gia um, goes to meet up with Candace. And then she starts telling Candace about Jim, and she's like, "Oh, Jim is just so funny. Oh my God!" And he was talking about his wife and his kids. And next thing you know, that damn Candace slapped the shit out of Gia. Just went straight. Bop. She's like, "Bitch, you like him? Yeah, you like him. Bitch, you're a whore." 
He's a John. He don't give a damn about you. You're just something to entertain him and something to get him off so he can go back to his miserable life. He don't give a damn about you. He don't care about your well-being. And at the end of the day, you're the whore. He's the John. Never forget that shit. So what you getting? She said $1,500. She's like, $1,500? How am I supposed to live off of $1,400? I'm like, really, bitch? Damn, you robbing that girl like that? It's cruddy as fuck. But hey, that's how pimps get over on the on the hoes. You know? So pretty much she tells her that, you know, get take your ass so so pretty much while they going back and forth or whatever, she gets a um a, a text on her phone and she sees that there's over eight million dollars that's been transferred to her account. So she's like, um, you know what? I'm going to do you a favor. You keep that money. As a matter of fact, I'm done with all this shit. I'm done with this and I'm done with you. Get the hell out of my room and have a nice life. And she's literally begging Candace. But Candace, I'll be better. I'll be I'll be good. Please don't, don't do this to me. And I'm like, no, this bitch is not fucking crying because her pimp gave her up. Like, bitch, you can make more money now you ain't got no pimp. Crazy ass. But it shows you right there she's not she's not even she's gullible. So all of a sudden she goes back into the room, she's crying. Jim has finally woken up and you Jim can tell that she's emotional, you know, and she's just like she starts sitting down and she's she kinda like is breaking down and emotional and um and you know and Jim is like Jim's a real asshole. You know, because she was like, I, I just went to go get me some cereal. And he was and he was like, well, I guess it really must have moved you to tears. Like, it must have been that great that it moved you emotionally. I'm like, <laughs> asshole. But then he tells her to come over there because she's crying. She's like, I really don't want to do this anymore. You know, I just want to be an honest person. And I want to live a better life. And I just can't. It's so stressful. I can't do this anymore. And then he's like, so all of a sudden he starts putting his hand on her ropes. Like, okay, tell me how I can make you better. Let me make it better for you, baby. Tell me how I can make it better. And she's like, this doesn't make me feel better. So he's like, oh, okay. He pushes her off and was like, really? He was like, hell yeah, really. I ain't come here for all this bullshit. I could have got this bullshit at home with my wife. I ain't come here for this crap. You know what? You know what? You obviously, and, he, and it's like the thing about it is like, yo, the same shit that Candace told her, Jim literally told her that right after that. And I'm like, bitch, you got to be the dumbest motherfucker walking. So therefore, he just throws money at her ass and then puts $20 on the nightstand. It's like, yeah, you got a $20 tip because you have potential. I'm out of here. And I'm like, <laughs> that shit was so messed up. But I'm like, bitch, get the fuck out of here. Like, you really was falling for his ass. And he's a fucking John. And she was trying to tell your ass that's exactly what they do. Um, Let's see, what else went down? You know? Oh, yeah. So, so Veronica has a tracking device on, um, on the, Melissa's phone. So she knows that Melissa is over there with um, Benny. She calls Benny up and she says, oh, so you got that whore in your house now? And she says, so, so this is what you do? You're just like David. You know, you got a great thing, but then you want to throw it away for something younger and dumber. You know, you men aren't good for shit. And like, Benny's like, well, regardless of how you feel, I don't belong to you, so I can do what the hell I want to do. It is what it is. But she says, I'm going to get your ass, Benny. I'm going to get you real damn good. Trust and mark my words. You have not seen the last of me, and you will regret ever crossing me. So I was like, okay. So I'm like, but at the end of the day, yeah, I, I, I'm, not, I'm all for Benny getting fucked up because Benny's an asshole. Benny's an asshole. He's childish. He's selfish. And he really thinks he is God's gift to the women and shit. Because, I mean, yeah, he's fine as hell. Like, Benny's fine. But Benny is on some bullshit. Because, dude, you don't understand why she's fucking mad. You was fucking this bitch in her house. 
Like, dude, how more disrespectful could you be? So yeah, I'm like, I'm all, I'm Team Veronica in this situation. Fuck Benny up, cause Benny needs a wake up call. Benny done got all this money from the Malones, ain't got no job. Where the damn tow truck at, Benny? What the fuck's going on? Cause you gotta pay that damn money back. So what the fuck? So it's like Benny got all this bullshit going on, but want to walk around like he got it together when he is probably the one of the most screwed up people on the show. And then we see that Veronica, that um, Hannah talks to, um, you know, she talks to um, Melissa. You know, Melissa's talking about being pregnant and all that. And she was saying that, yeah, you're going to feel some kind of... But she's like, she really doesn't care, you know, that she's pregnant at this point. I mean, she says that, yeah, that's typical. But once you start feeling the baby inside you, that will probably change. You know, you'll start to fall in love with the baby and all of that. So the two of them have connected. And she pretty much says that, look, you can stay here as long as you need to. And Benny will be here to help you if you need if you need anything. Oh, but Benny, Benny was just being real fucking smug. Like, when she came to his room, he gonna pull the covers over him, trying to cover himself. I'm like, dude, weren't you just banging her out on Veronica's couch just a while ago? And now you want to get all bashful? Hell out of here. And they go back and forth and everything. And he's saying that, you know, d you know, have you reached out to your mother yet? Because you need to find somewhere to stay because you can't stay here. And she was like, oh, so I'm good enough to screw, but I can't stay in your house. And he's like, no, nah, you got to get the hell up out of here. Well, he says, well, your mother said I can stay. So it is what it is. Yeah, yeah, coming from the man who still lives with his mama. I was like, oh, oh, Melissa, I wouldn't be talking no shit if I were you, boo-boo, because Benny got a roof over his head. You the motherfucker who need a place to stay because you got kicked out of the only place that you could live because your mother and damn Veronica got a damn arrangement. So we saw all that shit go down. So then, um, so then, um, we also notice in this, ep we also notice within these episodes too, another thing that stuck out to me, that Candace and the new guy actually starts to bond, and he also brings up that whole situation with Justin, and she's already peeping shit, and she's like, you know, so she's like, so are you gay? He's like, oh no, I'm straight, and she's like, hmm, yeah, you're straight as, you're, yeah, you straight as long as the money's right. Yeah, like yeah, she's like, yeah, you straight, yeah, but you'll go gay if the price is right. And he's like, well, I'm letting you know the price wasn't right with Justin because nothing happened between us. Yeah, you probably just, you know, you probably just, you know, shook the handle and maybe, you know, decided to, you know, um, sip the straw. But that's probably all you did. But he was just like, you know, I'm, I'm over it. You know, I'm gonna take this dude down and all this shit. So it's like, wow. And, like, Candace is already peeping. She already knows who the hell you're talking about, too. So then we see that Rocky and the damn hotel manager have a conversation. You know, we see that the hotel manager is still trying to, you know, gank Catherine out of money. And then we see Rocky's talking about, oh, yeah, this whole situation with Oscar and um, Candace. You know, I was the one that took the picture for Candace. Candace needs to cut me in on that deal. And he was like, man, Candace ain't gonna cut you in on that shit, bro. You might as well just let that go. So I'm saying that Rocky gonna end up being a fucking problem. Which is gonna be interesting to see how that plays out. Which I think why her and old boy gonna get real cool. Alright. So then, we see later on that that damn Veronica goes to Jeffrey, you know, saying that, you know, if you sign these papers... Um, I can get you out of here. You know, we I can get you out of here today. Not even, but also knowing that um, you know, David had already gotten a call that they're that that he's posted that that you know he made bail, so he's getting out anyway. But Veronica is trying to get him to sign off on this document saying that Benny was the one 
who acted alone, who killed Quincy Maxwell. So now Benny can be in jail and now that Jeffrey can be free. And Jeffrey is peeping her game because he knows how conniving and 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 like he knows how conniving and uh, messy his mother gets. So he's kind of looking at shit. She was like, so you want to put everything on Benny, huh? Hmm. Yeah, something happened to make you want to do this shit. Yeah, Benny must have turned you down. Yeah, that's what it is. He ain't want your ass, and now you want to lock his ass up. And she's like, oh, so what is it? You want him? And she's like, and, and like Benny, and like Jeffrey's like, girl, bye. Like, you just mad because he don't want your old ass. Like, yeah, that's what it is. He turned you down, and because he turned you down, now you want him. Now you want to get him arrested. But she says that, look, you ain't really got much of a choice. I mean, hell, either it's you give up Benny or your ass is going to go to trial and it'll be over a year before you can even think of getting a, um, before you can think of getting an appeal. So you screwing yourself over. So I would suggest you do this. And before she's about to leave, he's like, okay, I'll do it. But that ended up not happening because he ends up, because actually, um, uh, David was able to get there in time to get his ass out because then we see that that damn um, Justin gets um, gets um, what's his face gets um, Justin gets Jeffrey out of cell talking about something you're going home so of course he's thinking that Justin is still on his bullshit again but then he takes him you know he takes him to um, his um, he takes him to the conference room and he's like you know what I, you know I, I really want us to be together and I really want this to work between us and he's like man save that shit won't you tell that bullshit to that other dude that you was up in here messing with he was like man I don't want him I want you you know and it was obvious that Jeffrey was jealous and he felt some kind of way about it you know Jeffrey liked being the only one so he's like man I don't want him I want you I want us to be together and he was like you know what if 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 I'm not going home Take me back to my cell. I ain't got time for this shit. And he's like, really, Jeffrey, you're free to go. Yeah, you made bail. You're free to go. So all of a sudden, you know, we see him following and, you know, Jeffrey's like, so where am I going to stay? And he's like, oh, you're going to be staying at my condo or whatever. So then we see that damn, that damn Justin just standing there being all nosy because, you know, he ain't going to let Jeffrey's ass go. So then... All of a sudden, he takes him. He, so pretty much on the way to taking him to the condo, that damn, that damn um, um, David takes him to the house, and Erica and her whole ass, you know, coming downstairs in some lingerie, about to do a reveal, and all of a sudden, Jeff um, Jeffrey's there too. And the thing about it, Jeffrey and Erica know each other, but Erica was able to hide her face, so he didn't see her. And she ends up going upstairs and calls Candace and Candace and she's like, um, but what if he saw me? He's like, well, did he see you? She's like, well, I don't think he did. She's like, well, bitch, why the hell are you calling me? Get the, get the hell off my phone. And then all of a sudden when, you know, when, um, when David comes in the room, she throws the phone. And she's like, oh, I feel so sorry. I feel so embarrassed that I came downstairs like that. She's like, I think it should be a while before I meet your son because... You know, that's 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 like a bad memory for me, and I would want to get that out of my head. So he's like, "Okay, cool." He's like, "I want you to meet my son. He's such a great guy." And I'm like, and she says, "My son is gay, so he's so it's not bad. It's okay." She's like, "Well, that makes me feel a little bit better, but I feel uneasy." I'm like, "No, you feel uneasy, bitch, because he knows who the fuck you are, and you're afraid he's gonna tell the truth about your ass." Anyway, now. Also, what's going on is that this damn Wyatt is um, at the damn bar. The damn car not working. He's pretty much saying like, "Look, I I can do this. Um, I can um, I I can call my mom and everything, and I can find the money, and you know, I'll pay you double. I'll give you double and everything." So it's like, "Oh, you won't give me double? Make the damn call." So he calls his mom calls Catherine, lets her know that he's in a bind and he needs help. And she's like, look, I'm not giving you money for drugs, Wyatt, if that's what you're asking for. He's like, no, but they're going to hurt me and I, I need your help. I really need some money. I really need your help. She's like, okay, won't you text me the address? And, you know, so then he tells, 
he tries to tell Mitch's uncle, okay, my mom's gonna, um, I'm, I need the address here so I can text my mom the address, and then my mother's gonna come here and bring the money. Wyatt, you junkie motherfucker. You, this, this is not no damn negotiations, bruh. You are dealing with the mob. You're dealing with, you're dealing with, you know, a crime family. You either put up or you shut up. And you think they, he gonna trust that your mother won't call the police and have them come there? Knowing you're being held there, you know, you know, because you haven't, you haven't been able to pay your bill. You got high, but then, but don't got the money to pay for the supply. Come on now. So, all of a sudden, we see that Jim and Catherine have a conversation. She lets Jim know what's going on. Jim says, we need to track his phone and find out where the hell he's at. Because she says, uh, you know, you know, I'm just thinking that we should just, you know, you know, um, you know, go there with the money and get him out of there and all of that shit. And she's like, are you fucking kidding me, Catherine? This is, this is, uh, these are drug dealers. They're going to fuck him up. That's what's going to happen. He ain't got no money. He got high. They're going to beat his ass. So we need to get to him and get him out of there the best way we can. So we need to track and find out where he's at and then go from there. But then he also said that, so all of a sudden we see that he was going to make a call. And she's like, oh, what is it? You're going to call one of your whores? And he says, anything better than you. But this whore is actually going to help with your case. So we see that he pretty much calls Sarah and tells Sarah, you get your ass over here tonight at the Artesian. She's like, I can't. She's like, um, get your ass over here like I said. And, you know, we got some business to attend to. So we see that going on. And then what we have is the damn, I call it Justin, I call it Justin Swan song. Because everything came home to roost on, on this last episode with Justin. First of all, his captain came to him because the video between him and him and Jeffrey has gone viral. Everybody on the squad has seen it. Everybody knows about it. And he's asking him, have you reached out to your mother or your wife? And he said, no, I haven't talked to my mother. And she was saying that, okay, because your mother's been calling, your mother's been calling the mayor. You know, and he's been asking me, am I working you too hard? And, you know, why he hasn't reached out to her. So what you need to do, because he says at the end of the day, I'm not judging you on what this video is. But what I'm saying is that you need to get on top of this and you need to make things right with your family. Because everybody now knows your shit, including me. So I'm like, wow. So I actually like the captain. The captain wasn't homophobic. But kind of was letting him know he need to get on top of the situation because this situation is getting out of hand. Oh, then his mother showed up and his mother went in. She was like, uh, what the hell were you doing with that colored boy? What were you doing? He's like, I wasn't doing anything. I wasn't doing anything. And she says, yes, you were. He's like, I wasn't, mom. She's like, yes, you were. It's just like when you were in high school and you got caught in the locker room with that boy. So I'm like, bitch, so you mean to tell me you knew your son was gay and you allowed your son to live this lie and you're wondering why he screwed up? You're partially the reason why he screwed up. And on top of this, she racist as hell too? So what was you doing with that colored boy? Which is probably the reason why he wanted the black meat because you've been denying it from him for far too long. So he been craving black boys probably for years. So all of a sudden, she's like, oh, so you have nothing to say for yourself? And he's like, no. So she says, okay, well, you're out of my will. I don't want to see you on holidays, birthdays. Don't come by my house anymore. You are officially cut off. I want nothing else to do with you. And then she was like, look what you've done, Justin. Look how you ruined your life. <laughs> and then we see her little ass waddle out the damn door. I'm like, get out here, you old mean bitch. And Justin, Justin didn't give a shit. Justin had like a tear and it was like, check, bitch. <laughs> like, he didn't care. But the killer, the killer is when his wife came to the damn precinct with divorce papers. 
You know that son of a bitch just signed the damn divorce papers, didn't bat an eye, didn't care. And she's like, wow, you literally signed this shit and you ain't even look at it. You ain't care. You just signed it like I like our marriage meant nothing to you. And he's like, look, I'm just sorry that all this has happened. But, you know, you said you wanted a divorce. I'm just giving you what you asked and just being very nonchalant about it. But she says, uh, but I got a newsflash for you, baby. You didn't just you didn't just sign the divorce papers. You also signed a restraining order for you to stay far the fuck away from me. And then all of a sudden he was like, well, what about what about my daughter? And she's like, oh, you're never going to see her again. Yeah, you signed off on your parental rights as well. I was like, oh, that bitch came in there and worked his dumb ass. Nigga, you not only signed your divorce papers, but you signed a restraining order and you signed over your parental rights. And that's when he broke down because obviously he loved his daughter and that was the one thing that made him cry. And I'm like, see, Justin, your chickens came home to roost, bitch. See, this is what happens when you play these DL nasty ass games. Eventually, people are gonna find out your tea, bitch. So yeah, her tea's out there, but then yeah, that was also thanks to Veronica's ass. So we see all that going on. Now, then we also see that damn Candace tries to find tries to, you know, get access to the money that supposedly is in her account. But then she comes to find out that the accounts, um, that the that the assets have been frozen, you know, because you know, it's been flagged as fraud, and it's also because Wyatt also called and said that he didn't authorize for any money to leave his account, and he pretty much said that yeah, um, I want an investigation. But then again, there's more to it than that, because here it is, Cand Candace calls the bank. To find out what the hell is going on. And they tell her that look. It's a federal hold on it. And you know. You you um, have to talk to them. To find out what's going on. So she gets the number. And tell me why the hell that damn number went right to damn Landis cell phone. Miss Young. And she's like. What the hell is this? Like, Is he fucking blocking my money? And, he, and she's like yeah. And he wants you to see him. And she's like you know what. I'm not here for him or your or this bullshit. And he's like, come on, Candace. You really, like, he's like, no, give me my money. And he's like, come on, Candace. You know it's not your money. Stop it. And I'm like, I'm like, damn, Candace. Like, oh, boy, no, every move you're about to make. Because you know how, how, um, you know, how thorough Charles is. After Charles, you know, read you your rights and knew everything about you and your family. So, yeah. She she was kind of so she was kind of over it to find out that Charles was the one that intercepted that money because he wants her to um to see him, but I'm like girl I think your ass better go, just saying. So then she tries to call Veronica to get help to to see if she can get her in touch with a federal judge. Veronica blows her off like girl I ain't got time for your bullshit today. But she does go to see a federal judge but for herself and she wants a federal judge to, um, you know, to actually send out a crew to pick up Melissa and put her in a psychiatric ward because she's suicidal and she's very temperamental and I, I care about the safety of my grandchild. And we also found out that her and that federal judge then had liaisons with each other. Because he was like, oh, yes, and I'm sorry about your divorce. It's so sad that such a beautiful woman of your, like yourself has kind of gone through this. And you know about that time. I was like, oh, damn. So, Veronica, you've been kind of getting freaky with some of these old white men. Oh, nasty heifer. Okay. So, she pretty much lets him know that, look, I need somebody to go pick her up now and put her in a padded room. So, now... People are on the way to pick up Melissa to put her ass in a psychiatric ward. So we're going to see how that plays out. And from the things of it, I don't think I got anything else. Um, oh, yeah. 
So the episode ends, you know, oh damn, um, Mitch's uncle starts roughing up Wyatt because Wyatt is like, obviously, Wyatt ain't got your damn money and he ain't here for no more Wyatt, is bu- Wyatt and his bullshit. So he begins to really beat Wyatt's ass. Wyatt gets up and starts to fight back. He cracks um, a bottle and literally sticks the bottle in old boy's neck. So he ends up killing Mitch's uncle. So now this dumbass done killed him alone. So now you got war on your hands for you and your damn family. So nobody's safe. So this shit is really about to get real. So that's what I have, y'all. If I missed anything, put it down in the comments. I'd love to hear from you guys. But um, subscribe, subscribe, subscribe to my channel. Click that bell so you get notifications every time I drop a video. Also, follow me on all of my social platforms. I have them all listed in the description box. Also, like this video, comment on this video, share this video. And I will be back with the next episode of the Haves and the Have-Nots. So until then, everybody, take care.